It's been a long, long day on Saturday at Motorland Aragon. We were qualifying at 10.15 this morning. We got the race underway in full daylight at 6 p.m. And Phil Hansen from pole position managed to fend off any attacks from Nico Pino and from the second row as well. The Rui Andrade driven 43 into Europol competition car. Andrade would muscle his way up into second place later on in the stint, but couldn't shake Phil Hansen from the race lead. Meanwhile, very, very busy on several occasions into the hairpin at the end of the lap with the number 19 Team Virage car putting the squeeze on a couple of LMP3 machines. Number four, not carrying damage at that point, but later on it would do. This was a horrible moment for Johnny Lawson in the Formula Racing Ferrari and for Rui Andrade in the LMP2 car. The two connecting on the run into the corkscrew at turn eight. It would put the Ferrari out on the spot. And although Rui Andrade would limp back to the pits, the team at Inter-Europol competition would not be able to repair the rear damage and Rui Andrade stepping away from the car there, signatures confirming that the car would be out of the race. Meanwhile, for those that survived the opening exchanges, some great battling within LMP2, particularly in the LMP2 proper category or the uh, non-pro-am category with the silver drivers. And likewise, actually, a really good duel in the early stages between the Pro-Am leaders of Sally Jolic and Giorgio Roda for Racing Team Turkey and Proton, respectively. Diving down the inside there was the 47 car, and there was a bit of afters as well with the 65 Panis racing machine. So that was Timon von der Helm getting stuck in with Richard de Guerras. GT's a super show in the early stage. You had something like five of the GT regulars uh, a line astern with the Aston Martin, the Ferrari and the Porsche all looking competitive. You can tell that the light was getting longer, the shadows growing as well and that more golden light appearing as the sun started to move towards the horizon for an 845 sunset. United Order Sports bolting on a new set of tyres for their second driver, Marino Sato and he would be charging his way up the order before eventually handing the car over to Ollie Jarvis for a couple of rapid stints on brand new tyres. Side by side action again into turns 14 and 15. That was a regular sight for the full four hours. As up through the gears there would go the Racing Team Turkey machine. I noticed that one of their pit stops, number 34, is currently under investigation, but they were not a podium finisher in the end in the LMP2 Pro-Am, so that will not alter uh, podium. There was a glimpse of Ollie Jarvis coming out of the twisty stuff in the early part of the lap. A late pit stop as well for the number 28 car of EDEC Sport. And in the end, EDEC would finish in second place ahead of Algarve Pro. This was a horrible moment for Cool Racing down at the first corner with 37 and 47 making contact. Malta Jakobsen in the 37, Pachito Lopez in the 47 car. And both would, well, the, the 47 would limp away, the 37 out on the spot. And uh, yeah, first lesson of motorsport, don't hit your teammate. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for Cool Racing. United Order Sports, though, with the first win of the season. So, 119 laps completed for United Order Sports USA, and they, in their number 22 car, take victory over Paul Lafar, Paul Luc Chatin, and Laurence Hoare in the number 28 EDEC car. Algarve Pro Racing, after their victory at Le Castellet last time out, will get a podium from the back of the grid. 83 wins the LMP2 Pro Am. Uh, field, and that's the AF Corsa entry for Francois Perodo, Mathieu Vaxivier, and Lesia Rivera. Nielsen Racing in the 24 car was second ahead of the 21 United Autosports sister car. LMP3 won by Cool Racing in the number 17 ahead of Wokenspiegel Team Monschau with Rinaldi Racing and Ultimate in the number 35 finishing also on the podium in third. And in the GTEs, it's Kessel Racing with their 57 bright yellow car of Takeshi Kimura who started, Scott Huffaker did the middle stint and Davide Regon bringing it home ahead of the 16 Proton Competition Porsche and the 93 Proton car. That the Michael Fassbender car that, remember, was in a spin after a collision with Duquesne. He was stuck facing the pit wall for over a minute, but a 